Good morning and uh, welcome to the third annual call centre conference. On behalf of Gail Buckland, the event manager and the rest of the forum events team, we'd like to thank you all for coming and welcoming you here today. We hope you have a beneficial day and um, an enjoyable one at that. Before I hand you over to our chair, Nicola Collister, I would like to just um, give you a few bits of information. There is no fire test programmed in today so if there if you hear the alarms and it's consistent then it is real so please make your way out of the nearest exit I'd also like to thank our um, main sponsor which is CTOK and before I hand you over to Ryan who will say a few words on behalf of the organization um, I'd just like to let you all know that Plan Plantronics has um, a free prize draw you've all got a little um, sort of card in your bag so if you want to enter that just go and fill that in and hand it back to the guys and they'll be drawing that at the end of the day they've also got a competition where um, during the closing presentation, under one of the seats in this room will be an envelope and that's the person who will also win the prize. And it's a Backbeat Pro, um, which is for the music lovers, a nice headset there, or a Backbeat Fit, it's for the gym buffs. So I'd like to hand you over to Ryan from Talk. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, on behalf of Talk, uh, thank you very much for attending the event today. Um, uh, I'd like to invite you to come and have a chat with us when you have time in between the, the seminars. Um, my colleagues Gemma and Paul will be available if you'd like to have a look at our product and just have a chat about what kind of thing you're looking for. Um, thank you for, uh, again, your time today. And uh, I'm going to hand over to Nicola Collister now, who's the chair for today. So thank you. Okay, you all uh, ready for an exciting day? Yeah, yeah. Want to learn lots of stuff? Um, apparently, it's going to be. It is some of the presentations are actually uh, CPD certified. So, if you want to go away and prove to your boss that you've actually learned something today, um, if you as you come out of the room, there's some clipboards on each of the sessions. If you, your name should be on that list, if it isn't, just add your name on there. If you tick it then you will get sent a certificate. So you can go back and say to your boss, it was well worth coming down to London. So um, in terms of we've got a, a, a quite a stacked lineup in terms of presentations. So before I just run through, you should have previously selected uh, one of these seminars. So we're going to break off after this first presentation into some seminars. So hopefully if you've all chosen, you all know what you're doing. Yeah, you've all had plenty of coffee, everybody's awake, yeah. <laughs> so, um, we, we, as I say, after the first presentation, we will break up for that. But I think what's interesting for me, I was just having a think about um, the call centre or contact centre industry and having worked in that industry for over 20 years, yep, yeah, I know I, I don't look old enough, um, but having run some of the big contact centres um, across the UK for various different retail, service, logistics organisations, I think what's fascinating is is there's over a million people now today who work in contact centers. So not necessarily call centers because we've got lots of other channels now that everybody's interfacing with. So over a million people in contact centers. But if you then think about as consumers, we don't just think about contact in the context, in the context of a contact center because every day we're coming into contact with individuals you know who are giving us services or not as the case may be so in the service industry in the UK over 50 percent of the working population actually works in the service industry so I think that's a more staggering statistic when you think about how many millions of people we all work in the service industry probably most of our family and friends work in the service industry um, and that includes you know people that are delivering parcels they're coming into contact with customers for online retailers it's the only part of any engagement directly with a customer customer that that online retailer has. Um, if you think about financial services, you know, they've got human interaction when people are walking into the bank. Um, so there's you know, a lot of people every day are coming into contact with customers and vice versa. So I think hopefully today, let's have a think about not just what applies to the contact center, but equally some of the things that you can take away for your businesses that could apply in the wider context of customer contact. 
Um, we're now in the age of engagement. So we've moved from the age of information um, where obviously the internet of everything, you know, we had so much stuff. Now it's about starting to think about how we engage those customers better. Um, and without further ado, I'll hand you over to our first presenter this morning, um, Maurice Pentel, who's going to talk about all things. You're going to talk about the next generation. So hopefully we'll learn a lot from Maurice. If you can put your hands together for Maurice Pentel. So good morning, everybody. Um, thank you, Nicola. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Maurice Pentel. Um, I run a thing called the Customer Experience Foundation. I'm going to tell you a bit about that. And I have the best job in the world. I travel around the world and I advise really large companies and governments about things to do with contact, things to do with uh, the nature of the customer relationship. And what I'm going to try and do today is I'm going to try and give you a few practical thoughts to take away. Uh, about what the future of your contact centre is. I'm going to start out by, uh, by following up on what Nicola said. Um, we call them contact centres now. And that's to say they are the centre of our contact. And part of what I want to do is to talk about that role and to talk about the way this stuff works. So uh, I'm going to take you on a bit of a journey. Uh, I'm going to talk about animals. I'm going to talk about uh, nanotechnology. I'm going to talk about all kinds of things. But before I do that, naturally, it's all about me. Otherwise, I wouldn't be standing on the stage. So let me tell you a little bit about my organization. Uh, we're the Customer Experience Foundation. And um, you probably had an experience today that I or somebody relating to me uh, help design and deliver. Um, and when it comes to things like customer journey mapping, I have the privilege of, um, uh, of working with people who first came up with some of these ideas around the world, just to give you some idea. Um, and um, give you kind of an idea of the, the, the scale of what we do. Uh, we do an awful lot of work for really big organizations and governments, as I said. And here in the UK, yes, I have worked for every single major bank and done an awful lot of minor ones, but I've worked for uh, other organizations as well. And I was the bloke who designed the first cloud-based call center, though we didn't call it cloud, um, in 1999, just before the, the millennium bug bit, and, um, and we're still inventing stuff today. OK, so that's me. Let's talk about change for a minute. And here's a really interesting fact. 20% of our customers were using smartphones. And I think this is an off-com figure. My apologies if I've got that wrong. 20% of our customers were using smartphones in 2011 to contact business. It's now 70%. Now, my first question that I'd like you to take away from this is, if you think about a smartphone, and you think about the fact that your customers want to speak to you any place, any time, anywhere, wherever they want to be, and I'm going to talk about that more later, what have you done to change the underpinnings of your organization, your call center, your contact center, to take advantage of the fact that you now have GPS, you now have information about security, you're now able to use a whole host of the functionality of this and the tablet to actually engage with your customer? Or are you still just treating them like a phone call from a house? I'm going to talk a little bit more about that as we go. Here's an interesting statistic. I'm not sure I completely believe it. According to research, the average young American looks at their smartphone 221 times a day. And from some of the smiles in the room, I guess you, 
you're up there with some of those numbers. And, you know, why do we do that? Well, it's because the next text, the next message, the next salacious gossip on Facebook, who knows what it's going to be, but it may change our lives. The next email from work may change our lives for worse or for better. Um, but we are addicted to the speed of update. And I was at a conference uh, a, a while ago, and um, someone started talking about sheep. And he said, this is our customers. This is how we always thought our customers were. We like our customers to be sheep. We tell them where to go, how to behave, what to do. And you'll notice they're in a pen, and that's because we want to shear them. Then we want to set them free, and we want to herd them up again and then shear them. And he said, but this is wrong. This is not where we were with customers. And this was a real revelation to me. He said, we're not, our customers aren't like sheep. They're like wolves. And the guy who did this, he's a tremendously clever guy, uh, a friend of mine, a guy called Mike Havard. If you haven't heard of Mike, uh, do look him up. He, he's, he's well worth understanding some of the things he writes and says. And he also said, this change means that regulators are becoming less important. And again, as I go, I, I hope I'm going to uh, convince you that perhaps that's the case. So organizations are no longer the apex predator. I'm going to give you a quick history lesson. Basically, uh, I'll leave out the stuff from the caves to the first incorporation of or, or organization, because we don't have that much time. But um, from the time that an organization was able to sue a private person, that's actually a, a, a technical point in time, organizations started to become the apex predator of human society because our ability to sue an organization was never as great as an organization's ability to sue us. And organizations became the apex predator of, uh, of human society. And from our point of view, those of us in business, we were top dogs. We told our customers what to do, and we were in charge. And if we said you needed to go to window 21, having joined the queue and stayed in the queue for 45 minutes, well, that's what people would do. But we're no longer that apex predator, because the new power, the new kid on the block, is something called social me. I'm going to introduce you to social me, because social me is actually me, you, you, everyone in this room, jaunty. A little late, my friend, but still. Um, let me tell you a little bit about uh, social me. And social me is anyone with a smartphone. Because my home, my people, my stuff, my work, everything revolves now around three basic interfaces. Uh, the phone, the tablet, the laptop. But it's expanding. I'll talk about some of that as I go. It's all there. Everything in my world is suddenly digitally enabled. This makes a big difference. Nicola was talking before about the nature of contact. And one of the big things that I, I, I want you to start thinking about today is how well you measure against your customers. How, how good are you at, at, at meeting what your customers do? So how many of you are on LinkedIn? OK, just checking you're all awake. Who's on Facebook? Who tweets? OK. Who uses the telephone as a telephone? Anyone picked up an email on the, on the way here on the smart device? OK. We're pretty good at all of this. How good is your organization at doing this stuff? Yeah. And that's kind of a point. The other thing is, anyone here got Netflix? Sky? OK. Uh, Kindle? Right. 
You know, the great thing about Kindle, the great thing about Netflix is I can half watch a film uh, in one room, move to another room, it knows exactly what I was doing. I'm reading a book on my uh, phone and I can then watch it on my tab, I can then finish reading it on my tablet. There's continuous, uh, th 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 there is continu uh, 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 continuous experience is becoming part of what we expect. And if that's what we get out of a book, if that's what we get out of a movie, is it too much to ask for a continuous experience when I move from your website to your contact center? Why do I have to go back to the beginning? Why do I have to start again? Why do I have to re-explain myself, explain what's gone on. Is that where we need to be today? I also want to talk to you about the difference between where you think you are and where your customers are. Now, one of the great things that I, I, I've worked for banks for a, a lot of my career. And one of the most remarkable facts that, that I've lived with is, you know, our customer satisfaction as financial institutions never really went down. It never really went down when people found that we were overcharging people. It never really went down when, um, when people found out that we just destroyed the world economy. It never really went down when we stopped lending money to people. It never really went down. And the reason is, if you ask the right question, you get the answer you want. So asking questions that are relevant and asking questions are not the same thing. And I hope that by the end of this, I'm going to have pulled off the magic trick of bringing all of these little pieces together. Because what I find that is when I phone my supplier, and somebody says to me, well, I'm sorry, we, we can't fix that. It's part of your terms and conditions in the contract. Then they think they've resolved the call. But they haven't made me happy. But they've closed me as a case. And that is one of the challenges we face. We get the answers we want, not the answers that we need in so much of what we do. So. One of the projects we work on at the moment, so we build models. I'm, build, uh, I'm currently building the future house. I'm building uh, the future contact center. We're building the future retail experience and a whole range of other things, the future organization, a whole range of other things. I'm going to take you to the future house. And there's a reason why. So this is really a house in North London. It's a standard 19th century uh, end of terrace. Uh, house and the rules of the game for us is to only use technology that we can buy today. Now we bend the rules slightly because we may buy it from somewhere exotic but ideally it's how far we can push things with stuff we can buy on the high street. Let me tell you what I can do in the future house right now. From my mobile phone, and if any of you are sad enough, I'll show you this. Uh, uh, I'll show you this in one of the breaks. I can control all the lighting, heating from anywhere in the world, and indeed from this room. Uh, in addition to that, all of my content, all of my entertainment that is contained within the house, through a really clever little box that cost us, I think, around seventy-five pounds. I can actually play games. I can actually access all of the music in my library, the videos, all of those things, not to mention the services that I talked about before. In addition to that, all of my computing power, OK, I have a computer with me now, but I work in the world of Windows and in the world of Mac. I can access my computers remotely from anywhere, from my mobile device. Um, and yes, that is me trying on virtual sunglasses. And of course, um, if anyone wants to see what my kitchen looks like, to see what a mess it's in or not, I, it is a mess this morning because I left early, I can even change the color of the lights in the rooms. Yeah. All from my mobile device. 
And as for my personal data, it's available to me in two different kinds of clouds, one of which is a public cloud and the other one is a private cloud, where I share information across a network of colleagues rather than just with, a, 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 with an outside provider. And all of this stuff I can do on my mobile phone. And just before you get overly excited, the reality is when I'm doing all of this on my mobile phone, my phone doesn't work as a phone anymore. It's so overloaded, it actually won't answer calls. It sends everything to voicemail. Another year or so, and all of this stuff is actually going to work. But even today, this is what I can actually use a mobile phone to do. Yeah? So, let's talk about our stuff. In South Korea at the moment, they are experimenting with swarm technology. So I don't know uh, how many of you will be aware of things called icon beacons. These are kind of Wi-Fi hotspots that can tell how far away you are from them and can triangulate what you do as well as boosting your Wi-Fi signal. And then you've all seen drones and there are all kinds of other bits and pieces. Because they have such a fast network in Korea, they're now starting to build swarm intelligence in order to tell whether or not children are actually in the classes that they're supposed to be in. Yeah. The world is changing at such a rapid rate. Now, this is actually some bloke who won the gadget show competition, the one competition I truly want to win. And even that bike contains eight or nine sensors and a microcomputer. Uh, everything is becoming digital. Oh, I forgot to talk about the fridge. We are experimenting with the fridge at the moment. We can use it to do some remarkable things. And here's another thing. Video conferencing. How many of you actually operate call centers for, uh, for a day job or supply the IT for, for, for call centers as a day job? Yeah? OK. Could you raise your hands a little higher? Just oh, Thanks, guys. Uh, OK. Keep your hands up if you support video. Well done, that lady over there. Sorry, wrong glasses, but well done, that lady over there. Around twice as many people use, in the United Kingdom, video outside work than inside work. Around the world, it's a factor of five, according to some research I've seen. Now, I don't, I, you know, I'm not state staking my reputation on these numbers. These numbers are always a little bit, you know, a, a little bit woolly, and, and statistical analysis is not perfect. But many, many more people use Skype, use FaceTime, use all of these different platforms in order to actually communicate, but they can't communicate with us. And the interesting thing about video, uh, because I've done some work on this, is that when you have a video conversation with someone in an agreement, you are more likely to keep that agreement than you are by a simple phone call. And I'll be talking about that a little later, along with some of the other impacts. Yeah? So, we don't do video as well as the customer. That's a shame. Let's see what else we don't do. But before we do that, what I'm telling you is that from a practical point of view, we might all become friends. You may all link to me on... LinkedIn, you might write to my website, we might sit down, have lunch, you might text me, you might send me an email, you might invite me to share a collaboration session, we might hang out on Google+. I have a choice of options, as do the rest of you. How well do we do as organizations keeping up with that? How well are we keeping up today? 
You see, after work, we tend to be better informed than when we're in work. Because not only do we have all of the stuff from work, but we've got all of this. We've got Instagram, Pinterest, we've got Facebook, YouTube, Vimeo, blah, 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 as well as all of our basic work things. Does anybody here think that they are better informed as an employee than as a private citizen? Thank goodness, the other day someone put their hand up. Okay, that's really good. So, we're better informed as people than the companies we're working for. That's a challenge. And the challenge is this, this is customer power. We're moving into a new age and we're moving into it quickly. And customer power, something that we defined um, a, a, a few years ago, whether you call it customer power, consumer power, whatever, you know, our term is just our term, it's, it's our internal code. But it's the customer's ability to set your agenda. All right? And if you think the customer doesn't have the power, that's why a number of organizations source their produce locally, that's why people in certain organizations, and I can't mention who, um, because we are being filmed, uh, are now paying tax that they've managed to avoid for a long period of time. Because we set the agenda. If we don't like what you do, we can march with our feet, we can vote with our wallets. And digital commerce is everywhere. I, I, I'm a very lucky guy, I travel around the world. I was in Istanbul for a conference and I, I wanted to buy something for the delegates. It was a, a three-day thing. And, um, and what happened was I went into this shop and I realized I didn't have enough currency to, um, to, 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 to buy the stuff. And so I offered the guy a card and he looked at me as though I was a lunatic uh, and dismissed me from his shop. I have to say, one of the rudest shopkeepers I know. And the reason I took this picture is not because he was rude to me and not because he refused to take a credit or debit card, but because the reason that he was so rude to me was because he was in the middle of an online streaming game on his iPad and didn't see the incongruity between the fact that he was playing a game with some guy in Canada but couldn't actually swipe a card. Yeah. Because wherever we are in the world, we want access to our services. So this is one of the coolest views I know, and the reason is that through that O is a cafe, and if I sit in that cafe in Singapore, this is what I get to see. It's a remarkable place. And while I'm sitting there looking at that, I turn slightly to, uh, to the side, and what I actually see is this. We are the selfie generation. We are the generation 221 times a day looking at our devices. So engaged in our own world, we started bumping into each other. People have actually started talking about putting an additional camera on our devices so we can see where we're walking. <laughs> no, I'm not. That's the first big laugh I've had, and I'm not even joking. Um, our relationship, our, our experience is now being funneled down into these single devices. And what does that mean for the call center industry? Hopefully I'm going to make the point. But it's changing our economy. There are things you're doing in your contact center today that your customers should be doing for you. There are things that, that, that are going on today that means the role of the high street is changing. Now, I can't say, um, I, 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 I can't say one specific bank, but overall, in the UK, since the invention of the mobile banking app, who here uses a mobile banking app? Okay, so, 60% of footfall has disappeared out of bank branches. What are you going to do with all these buildings? What's going to happen to our high street? 
And you'll see that there's some stuff going on at the moment that really means that this is a big challenge for us. Innovation now flows in a completely different way. And I'm going to explain this to you. And by the way, but by the way I'm sure these slides and the guys are making a video, so I, you, know, you can catch this information later. But the balance of power has changed in our customer relationships. So uh, let, me, let me make a point about disruptive innovation. It wasn't the invention of the motor car that killed the saddle maker as a craft. It was mass production. The invention of the car was important, but it was the invention of the car plus mass production that changed things. Yeah, it's about coalescence. Well, if you think of all of the things that are suddenly coming to devices, all of the things that are some, suddenly coming to your phone, your tablet, your wall, your home, it completely changes the dynamic. Uh, now, this is scientific fact. For the first time in history, consumers have better technology than organizations. I want you to take that in for a second. That's not hyperbole. That's not me being a showman. That's me as a scientist, because my job is business science, having a research team looking into how much the world's big suppliers spend on innovation and looking observationally at the technology that we have. So I was one of the first people in the contact center industry, or, 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 or rather in the mass contact industry uh, at the beginning of the 1980s. I used to stand up in a room and say, let me tell you what a call center is, because you've probably got one and don't know what they are. And prior to that, I had a phone that was a brick. Okay, and this phone cost two and a half thousand pounds, and no one could afford to phone it, and everybody else had a home phone. It only, ran, it only rang once, and it rang, funnily enough, in the middle of a concert, so I couldn't answer it. Um, but um, for most of my career, people envied the work technology I had. Now, who here has a consumer telephone rather than a specially designed business one? Yeah? Pretty much all of us. Yeah? We spend, as organizations, billions on innovation. Tens of billions, in fact, on innovation. But bad news, ladies and gentlemen, consumer innovation is in tens of trillions. That's to say, your call center suppliers, our colleagues, uh, our, our colleagues and sponsors at CTOL, Interactive Intelligence, Avaya, Cisco, um, all of them, Mitel, everyone. Yeah, we're spending in billions, okay, in consumer technology, it's tens of trillions. Let me try and give you a feel for what that is. This is, anybody know who this is? Anybody? I, I am old and deaf, so someone a bit louder. Thank you so much, sir. And I believe in under 10 seconds, he can run 100 meters. I, I know. We look alike. A, a lot of people get us confused, yeah? And this is business. We are lean. We're six sigma, sigma. We're fast. We're focused. We're absolutely fantastic. But walking up with a cheeseburger and a bag of fries and a Diet Coke, this is the consumer. And in under 10 seconds, it doesn't matter how fast Hussein Bolt is running, that car is at 100 miles an hour. In fact, in that particular case, it's 130 something. Um, and that is the pace at which we're being left behind. That's the pace at which we're being left behind by our customers. We now have better endpoints than we've had ever. 
That fridge I, uh, I mentioned before, I can pretty much do anything on it from read an email to have a Skype call, to have it tell me the milk's going off and to place the order. I can also get it to assess the amount of electricity we're using in the house and a whole range of other things. This stuff is moving on at a remarkable rate. There's a, that there is a new kind of mobile device coming around. You've all probably heard about it. They're floppy, they're bendy mobile phones. You can fold them up and put them in your pocket. They're two or three years away. Yeah. Our devices are getting better, and the service layer, the applications that we use, all of those things will pretty much transfer from one device to another. There are very few things that I have on my tablet that I don't have on my mobile phones, and vice versa now. So what does this mean to us in the call center industry? I guess what it means is that we, what we've got to do is we've got to deliver service everywhere. We've got to deliver service wherever the customer wants to be. And the terrible thing is, as a customer, I want all of my stuff to happen in one single experience. I want everything that I do to fit together into one single thing. I don't want to have to use my mobile phone for 99% of things and you as the one supplier in the universe who I need to do something completely different for. Doesn't make sense to me. You're not going to win with me. Yeah? Every single thing that you're doing is now part of some overall customer experience. It's that simple. It's that straightforward. It is how well you're playing with others. Yeah. Consumers have access to better tools. I'm just going to quickly take you through some of these things. If I was running a delivery company, I'd want to make sure that both my agents and my staff had access to Google Maps. You know why? Because firstly, it's got up-to-date traffic, and secondly, it can show me what the door looks like that I'm about to deliver to. Here's something that I invented for a major retailer uh, a few years ago. And, uh, and basically, you can point an iPad or, or, or another uh, form of tablet at a door and uh, but, uh, swipe a barcode, and it will tell you whether or not the sofa will fit through the door. And I thought, wow, you know, I'm really clever. And then some guy I know at MIT, or actually maybe Caltech, uh, he said, you think that's clever? We've got something that will work out how many people it will take to carry it upstairs. And then some bloke from another university, and I forget which one, um, then said, well, we've just cracked the Nike wristwatch, and actually we can tell if the bloke carrying it up the stairs is going to have a heart attack. So, you know, <clears throat> and their stuff looks so much cooler, cooler than mine because they're Californians. Uh, things are changing so quickly. Yeah. Here's a fact. More and more of your customers are looking at online reviews. There are suggestions that it's 60%. There are suggestions in the UK that it's uh, 65 70%. It's definitely over half. Half our punters are looking at, um, at, at reviews before making buying decisions. How many, uh, how many people in call centers here think their staff have access to the same level of information as their customers? Interesting, isn't it? Because if my customers had access to review information, and if I was trying to do service recovery, or if I was trying to sell them something, or if I was trying to hold on to my customers, I think I'd want my staff to be as well informed as my customers. Yeah? If it's better, you need to use it. If the information's there, you need to find a way to put it in front of your staff. Now, I know this creates challenges. Should your people be on Facebook? Should your people be looking at review s sites? Yes, they should in a controlled way, but yes, they should. 
You see, it isn't what you deliver on your own. It is part of this single digital experience. Because wherever you, I am in the world, I want access to all of it. I don't care that I'm in that particular, I don't even rem remember where that was. But if I want to switch the lights on, if I want to make a transfer from my bank, if I want to talk to my electricity supplier, I want to do it whenever, wherever I am. Now, I know I have a slightly more exotic lifestyle than most people, but if you think people aren't sitting on the bus doing, um, d doing similar things, they are. Next, uh, 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 later this year, early next year, I'm off to Korea. I'm going to go and have a look at South Korea. I'm going to go and have a look at some of these new remarkable things. I don't know what comes after uh, 5G, super intelligent networks. But what I do know is there's people already working on combining intelligence, <coughs> artificial intelligence, into, I I I I into data networks. Let me introduce you to the new contact center stuff. So in case you think I'm joking, ladies and gentlemen, this is the people from Top Man who are the style, uh, sorry, the personal shoppers. They're not, they don't call them style gurus. They're personal shoppers. And these wonderfully cool and trendy young people are available to you on Google Hangouts. That's to say, a part of one of the largest retail groups in the United Kingdom uh, uh, has their staff available to you on Google Hangouts. Uh, how many of your call centers take Skype calls? Funny, it's uh, quite an important thing these days. So let's talk about you. Let's talk about where we are. Uh, Let's talk about some of the things that are changing right now. So I've got some examples of things um, that people have done with augmented reality. So this is up here is Ray-Ban. I no longer have to take my glasses off, OK? Pick up another pair of glasses, put them on, look in the mirror, take those off, put them back on, look in the mirror. I can do it all using augmented reality. Now, it's interesting from my point of view, from Ray-Ban's point of view, they don't have to carry stock everywhere. You can have your shopping experience at home. Anybody recognize this lady's red uniform? Virgin Airlines. Virgin Airlines playing with Google Glasses. Yes, there are still Google Glasses. It's just called something different now. Uh, to identify VIP customers. This is not fantasy. This is from the, the announcement picture that came up more than a year ago now. Yeah? They're using Google Glasses to identify VIPs in order to give them VIP service. It's a major airline. Over here, I love this one. So I end up driving in strange countries and strange towns. I get into the car and I am that bloke coming out of the car park with the radio blaring, the windscreen wipers going, the hazard lights going, because I have no idea about all the buttons that I've pressed. Audi have this fantastic app that will show me how to use the car. And of course, it'll tell me about my destination, how well or badly I'm driving, and a whole range of other things. But it actually shows me the controls in the car. I point the phone at the controls, and it tells me what they do. Um, anybody here used Halo? OK, Halo or Uber, these are things that are plugged into Google Maps, show you where your cab is where your delivery driver is. How many phone calls, how many, how many customer interactions do you think you could solve if your customer could see the guy stuck in traffic, he's 10 minutes away? Uh, how many less angry customers would you have 
if you simply plug that in. Okay, and the final piece over here, I'm going to talk a little bit about this in a second, the universal agent. Now, I don't expect there is one single agent who could deal with every single kind of customer across every single kind of platform. But as a contact center, we ought to be able to provide communication across every single platform across the entire enterprise. Because we are the center of contact. Now, This is one of the largest shops in England. Did you know that Amazon.co.uk has 100 million products? Yeah. And there it is. This is yeah, in my home, your home, everywhere. And if you think you can't adapt as an organization, if you're, you're thinking this is all too complicated, let me introduce you to quite an old organization who are managing to adapt quite well. This was Her Majesty the Queen doing her first tweet. And the wonderful thing is, within a couple of minutes, the internet being what it is, she'd already been trolled. If, if the crown can change, what is it that's stopping you changing as an organization? Now, I don't believe in all of this stuff. I'm not sure robots are ever going to take over the world, though it wouldn't surprise me. Um, and I don't believe um, that we're going to have flying drone deliveries, but I do believe that we're going to have flying, uh, that, that in effect we're going to have a flying Wi Fi system because there are people who are actually working on this right now. I also think that this pace of innovation means you need an innovation strategy. How many of you can actually identify an innovation budget within your organization? OK, we're in the fastest time of change in, in human history. Again, science, not hyperbole. Innovation's kind of an important thing, something you guys should be thinking about. Yeah, and I'm going to get, turn you all into innovation agents. So this is a phone-based app that will allow you to check into your hotel room at the Starwood chain. Starwood's one of the world's biggest uh, uh, chains. They started rolling this stuff out a year ago. All right, map the time from when you saw this so when it becomes your experience when you walk through a door, and that's the pace of innovation in this particular thing. For one reason or another, the consumer is moving to the cloud. Well, where are we as organizations? Are we taking advantage of this? We're probably not. So I'm going to just quickly move on, and I want to cover a few things. You've got to change the way you think about your channels and change the way about you think about your models. Because whether or not I'm having a conversation with a call center, or I'm having a conversation with uh, you on Twitter or something else, to me, it's one experience. Yeah? It's going to give you some new things to measure. And I will just give you one plug. So we've just put a tool up on the Customer Experience Foundation website. It's called a Customer Experience Health Check. You don't need to sign in in order to play with it. You don't need to give us your email. You don't need to become our friends. Go play. Go see what it says about your customer experience. Yeah. So here we go. Video, chat, blended channels. All of them, they're all changing the nature of contact. I'm going to give you one quick example before I go. Here we go. This is my case study. Graphical contact routing. People call it visual IVR these days. I still call it graphical contact routing because I like the idea. So I'm on your website. I've got a problem. OK, and um, I get stuck. What happens to me is I want to speak to an agent, so I finally find the phone number that you've hidden, and um, I then start again. 
Not very successful, and from the agent's point of view, that's an angry customer that you've delivered to them perfectly, probably having spent two minutes in a queue telling me that I could find the answer on the website, but that's just me, I'm a grumpy old man. Now, supposing that we recognize that, in effect, what we're doing is we're making our customers more unhappy, and also it's costing us more money, right? Here's what the new world looks like. I want to, uh, I, I, uh, I'm on the website, I end up wanting to talk to an agent, I want to speak to uh, a, a, an agent, so I press a button. Okay, this is not rocket science. This is straightforward stuff. And instead of going through a queue, instead of having to restart, it scrapes all the information from the web experience I was involved in, and it delivers it and me verified to an agent. So the agent goes, what's the problem? Let's share the session. I'm going to finish this off with you. How much better is that? Uh, I've done this piece of work for a number of banks around the world. On average, the ROI on this, uh, well, for one bank in the UK, it cost us £250,000 to build the app and they saved three million pounds in their first year. I'm not sure what the ROI would be. My maths isn't that good, but it's fairly good, yeah? And then there's this, yeah? Look at this simple thing here, okay? That's pretty much 80 to 85% of most common journeys displayed as a graphic. How much easier is it from my point of view to go dum, 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 and then to speak to someone who knows why I'm there on the phone? So, this is my world. This is what I'm able to do as I arrive here. This is my vision. I've got alerts from my home. I know, for instance, that my youngest daughter has arrived, she's in the kitchen, she's doing some stuff. I don't know quite what she's doing because I'm not that interested. I, I know I've already had uh, two LinkedIn updates this morning. I know Nicola's uh, tweeting. I've got all of my office uh, stuff. I know the weather. I know the entrance of the hotel is here. I have my cloud with me. I, I can change the color of the lights just to put the kids out. Yeah, this is what the world looks like to me. But for an awful lot of agents, in an awful lot of organizations, this is what it looks like. It's this, that's me as the customer, versus this. Now, some of you will have heard that our supermarkets are struggling with margins, and they're not the only ones. And I put this point to you. Right now, it feels like we're not as adaptive. We don't have as good kit. We're not as flexible. Right now, it feels like we've brought a knife to a gunfight with our customers. Yeah. This is my world as a consumer. Is this the world of your agents? Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoy your day. I hope you found what I've said interesting. My name's Maurice Pentel. I am here if you have any questions. Thank you so much for your time. Oops.